And then uh, what should I do from now onwards to the rest of the year? So uh, if you look for history, you see the importance of, um, of infectious diseases in human mortality has decreased a lot over time uh, for a number of actions in public health. But an important gap remains. There are uh, some accidents from time to time, either in, uh, the, in 1918 or in 2009, regarded, of course, very importantly, the proportions. Anyhow, uh, we have to address the question, what do we do when it comes next? Uh, what do we do if the time to develop a vaccine uh, it, uh, what, what do you do if it demands some time and if we do have to make it every season? Uh, what do you do if uh, antiviral agents are too expensive, they have way too many collateral effects, uh, and uh, if they're, they're not so easy to pause talk? Uh, so, uh, an addition that uh, is being suggested on literature is to start using uh, drugs we have already in the market uh, and they're not so expensive and that could uh, help uh, to address this question by modu modulating uh, innate immunity both uh, by uh, improving antimicrobial uh, power of the innate immune system or uh, from preventing it to harm the own host with excessive inflammation, cytokine store, and so on. And some drugs are suggested. Uh, so my objective uh, this year is uh, to assess uh, the microbicidal and host protective effects of potential immune modulators, and uh, this should be done in vitro and in vivo. Uh, of course, when uh, we think about this, we're not thinking only of pandemics, but anything that can be treated uh, with immune modulators. Uh, and uh, for this, in case of uh, uh, pneumococcal pneumonia, uh, Cobzic Lab has already uh, made some advance with statins, uh, showing that uh, they are effective in uh, helping the immune system to kill the bugs and preventing it to kill the host. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the, over this uh, last few months, uh, the same results are being found for this uh, similar results are being found for uh, another drug, Josolin the recombinant form of a uh, molecule that is endogenous and present in the body uh, and that seems to be uh, involved in bind uh, in, as, a, as an acting buffer for extreme situations. It has been explored for uh, uh, cases like uh, crush syndrome when you have myocytes destroyed and lots of actins uh, delivered to the plasma. Uh, uh, so it, it binds it in uh, serves as a buffer, but more interestingly, uh, it also binds some inflammatory mediators, uh, helping to keep uh, inflammation localized. Uh, so, if you uh, produce it uh, in a recombinant form as a drug, uh, you should expect the uh, beneficial effects that we are looking for. And by the results so far, you do, uh, you do see them. So. Uh, all, another interesting thing is that it seems to work in terms of improving uh, antimicrobial activity by stimulating uh, the nitric oxide uh, synthase pathway, uh, which is important for delivering to the phagolysosome uh, the nitric oxide that will further react with uh, oxygen reagent uh, species to generate uh, further molecules to uh, digest uh, the microbes ingested. Uh, uh, relevantly enough, uh, 
the typical way is the INOS, but in here, in this case, uh, we might see uh, some other way as uh, the lab has seen for settings. So what I have done directly uh, on the Josfali work was to assess time-wise the concentrations you can find of this drug when it's aerosolized uh, and administered to mice. Uh, through the technique, obviously, of uh, bronchoviolar lavage, in the western blot. So this slides to introduce back influenza and to show the importance of histopathology uh, this uh, disease can cause. Here you see uh, this wine colored lung uh, showing uh, the diffusion of ulnar damage uh, with hemorrhage that the the work of the uh, Department of, uh, uh, of Pathology in FMUSP was the first remark, in the world. <laughs> a marked remark on this study. We collected prospectively 21 cases of fatal H1 pandemics uh, in two weeks. Uh, we did all the moves to chemistry and the clinical charts, the theological identification and we submit the New England Journal of Medicine. It was rejected, was uh, published in the Blue Journal with a, with a photograph of the... Uh, what's in the front? The cover, cover, cover. Cover, cover. And then New England published six weeks after a five-case study with AG stain it. Uh, <laughs> the Mexican uh, and the American collaboration. Uh, I wrote a letter and said, why? And said, no, it's, a, it's our attitude. But you have a letter with this letter. I answered, that's not attitude, but latitude. <laughs> yes. uh, 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 I think there's not, there was not a fair decision on this, uh, on this thing. Just, I just want to, I want to express that. It was a, but it's a mess of information, isn't it? And it, it died because of bacterial infection, most of the cases. Mm -hmm. It's not because of the virus. I think this is the mess. And the, the uh, comorbidity that previously existing conditions were important as well, right? Yes. Uh, so in this Scandinavian study, uh, the most important feature analyzed was uh, uh, coronary heart disease. But what you see in this graph is the protection this investment in taking group had uh, concerning influenza, hospitalization, and mortality. Uh, the question that remains though is whether this is due to some kind of uh, lifestyle these patients might have for being chronically medicated patients that may uh, take care of their health in some way differentiated, or uh, this is a real effect of the drug. If it is, uh, this is one of the proposed pathways, that is, uh, studies by uh, blocking the uh, generation of cholesterol, also uh, interfere in the generation of something important to the expression of uh, inflammatory mediators, especially cytokines and selectins. So there's uh, limiting uh, vascular permeability and uh, therefore inflammation. This uh, we try to address on a study uh, that was performed uh, over the last month, a little bit, a little bit more. Uh, that I participated, uh, the person was uh, Sanjuk Tagosh performed the study. So, uh, in this study, uh, failed to show any difference uh, for studying uh, as a treatment after the onset of disease. That would be the expected uh, approach, uh, 
save in paranormal forecasting uh, <laughs> for the treatment of human influenza. Uh, but uh, it, it may show some protection for chronically taking uh, studies that might uh, be an explanation for this Scandinavian study. So, uh, the future direction that I have now uh, is to keep using this uh, methodology to assess the uh, other immune modulators that I had mentioned earlier. Uh, and for uh, a matter of time, uh, but keeping uh, still uh, an interesting designs to first uh, do uh, an assessment in vitro uh, on these uh, three classes of drugs and then choose the one with the most promising results to bring for an uh, approach in vivo. Uh, and this should contribute uh, to address this, um, this stress the, uh, this, the, both for pandemics and uh, the, uh, that pose to human health. And uh, this I'm going to skip for time. And thank you, everyone in the lab. Thank you. Obrigado, professor. Prazer, gente,